everybody. We are actually recording this on a holiday weekend, so I want to tell you in retrospect, I hope everybody had an awesome and safe holiday weekend. And we are in my woods, which is my happy place, just enjoying ourselves. Um, we made something quick to eat. We haven't eaten yet. We'll show it to you when it's done. But we, there's a couple of things we wanted to talk to you guys about. Number one, first of all, Gino and I would like to thank you for watching us every week. Absolutely, you have, you absolutely. Have no idea what it means to us because we are just here having a good time. We're not trying to make millions, but we sure are enjoying the journey. Yep, we really do appreciate it. You know, all the likes, all the comments, the shares. Keep it up, please. We really appreciate it a lot. So we did want to talk about a couple of things that we have up and coming. I know Gino had mentioned in the past that we really are more of a cold weather camping kind of deal than, than summertime. And the reason why we're actually in my woods, sorry, the locusts are a little loud, but we got a new mic coming, so we'll take care of that um, I mean, in, in a couple videos, I think, anyway. Uh, but the reason why we're here is because we're not big on crowds. And when you do cold weather camping, that seems to go hand in hand. Part of the reason why we like cold weather camping, the other part is because we don't like to take a shower and then sweat another shower in, you know? <laughs> true, true. By the way, uh, I am using a brand new camera for this episode. If you would, leave a comment how the quality of the video looks. I'm hoping it's better, but I need your, I need your input. I need to know what you think it looks like, better quality or not. So leave a comment. So the reason for our whole little um, campfire chat, which we do have a fire going over there that we were cooking on. I think you saw that earlier, maybe. Um, we, we thought it was going to be cool this weekend, but you know, the weathermen, they're the only people who can actually get paid for doing a job and doing it all the way wrong. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> I wish we were all that fortunate, but we're not. <laughs> but anyway, we couldn't miss this opportunity anyway, and it's getting, it's getting pretty nice here since the sun's gone down. But we're, we're doing a coal oil lamp chat, if you want to call it that, because it's a little bit cooler. True, but the fire is going. It's helping keep the mosquitoes away, so. It is. I got some sage to throw in there later. We're going to do a video upcoming in the future, which is one of the things that we want to talk to you about, what we've got coming in the future. And that is one of them. You know, you can buy what they call these smudge sticks on Amazon. They're, I want to say dirt cheap, but a little more than dirt cheap, but they're still really reasonable. And if you take that sage, um, white sage, I think it is, you can soak it in some water and supposedly, we're going to try it out here tonight, supposedly, if you take that and you throw it in that fire and you just get it smoldering, you don't want to throw it in it when it's flaming up and everything, it'll just burn up anyway, but to get it smoldering to make a smoky fire, apparently mosquitoes and bugs don't like that smoke smell from that sage, so we're going to try it out, we'll let you know. Anything's worth a try. Absolutely. Why don't you tell them something else we're going to try out, Gino? Well, we have on order a hand crank grain mill. And our plan is to grain, grain mill our own cornmeal from dent corn and our own flour from wheat and make some cornbread to go along with our ham and beans. That's going to be part of our On the Farm series. I don't know if you noticed that, but when we did um, the breakfast, and I think the beef stew was actually there, we had requests from a couple of viewers to do more things that are like sustainable living, you know, where you take care of your own stuff. And my son has grown some corn. You may have seen it in one of those videos, the beef stew or the breakfast, I don't remember. But there was actually corn growing in what used to be my flower garden. Well, he got older and he took it over and he decided he's going to plant corn there. It's non-GMO white corn. So we're actually going to grind some of that up into, in, in, into cornmeal. And then we're not going to make the cornbread in that video. We're actually going to come here in the woods and we're going to cook it in a Dutch oven, which is another viewer request. Is yep, Dutch oven yep, cooking. yep. And as a matter of fact, if you watch the beginning here, we have... Uh a little meal in the Dutch oven right now that we're going to enjoy a little later. Yep, but we're going to make uh, we're going to make cornbread in that Dutch oven, and we'll probably do. I was going to say ham and beans because I always make ham and beans and cornbread. Who doesn't make ham and beans and cornbread? Right. But we had some, another viewer request since we had mentioned it: ham and slickers. So I think you know we got a nice table here down here. 
we can uh, actually roll it out on. And yeah. I think we're going to make ham and slickers um, in remembrance of my mom, who is no longer with us, but always here in spirit. So yeah. we'll have ham and slickers and cornbread. That's one of the things we're going to do um, this winter. Uh, what's some more thing we do? Oh, Whoa, oh we have a huge surprise plan for you. If it works out, we're going to be making our own homemade apple butter. Yes, we are. I have apple trees. I have four red delicious apple trees just right up out of the woods from here between uh, the woods and the house. And they are loaded this year. We have had an unbelievable year. I mean, they, they just look like clusters of grapes growing on. I, I can't believe they didn't break, but we are going to get those apples picked here shortly. They're just about time, just about time, at least where we're at time to pick them and put them away down in the, in the root cellar and we will be making apple butter out of those apples so I'll have my dad out and his wife and you kind of like an apple butter and on the farm like they did years ago it's it's a great time you know you put it in a big old copper kettle and put an open wood fire underneath it throw you in some star anise and some stick cinnamon and and it just it's 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 a lot of fun I think if you're into that thing you won't want to miss it but we're also going to do something else between the cornbread and the apple butter, or maybe after the apple butter, but before the cornbread, we're going to make something else on the farm, which is the other part of our On the Farm series. Absolutely. Are you ready for this? We're going to be making our own homemade butter straight from heavy cream. And we don't have a butter churn, but we got we got one of those hand crank it's butter a, churns. It's a daisy. And, yeah. Daisy we got one churn. of those hand crank butter churns, and we're going to do it that way, so... I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Homemade butter is just the absolute best. It is. And if you know a dairy farmer who has who has raw milk and you can get your hands on some, and I would never reveal my sources because we live in the state of Illinois and you ain't allowed to do that, but um, I can get some, some, some cream. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. That butter is just unbelievable you know i know they talk about the what is it carry gold or whatever it is mm, yes oh it, it, it I, I don't care i don't care maybe that's good but when you actually make it fresh i don't care what your cows are eating it's better than what you buy in the supermarket <laughs> <laughs> guys we that's got me. we got so many exciting things planned for you guys to watch another thing we're planning on doing when it really gets chilly this fall is making our own beef jerky in a smoke tent right here in this spot if you follow us on facebook that's what i had there was like a black and red buffalo plaid yes it was actually with a tablecloth bought it cheap reduced at walmart after christmas apparently buffalo plaid's a christmas thing i don't know whatever um and we wrapped it around there and we smoked our own beef jerky unbelievable amazing it, 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 it is it really is so we're gonna do that it was something oh i know what it was I had um, addressed the issue on a Facebook post about the Camp Chef Alpine um, wood stove. We have, which we will be showing you, we're going to finish it, and um, hopefully you'll be, you'll watch us along with that, because we're going to bring you along with us. Hopefully you'll be there. Um, we're going to finish the shelter, and we actually, it's a tarp shelter, tarp and wood, and we plan on putting um, that, that, that stove inside of there to heat. So in the winter, we can come down here and we can sit in there and we can be toasty. We can come out here in the snow if we want to. We can still have an open fire because I love to be outside when it snows. Whole woods comes alive. You see the rises right. and the falls. And Clean, it's peaceful. Beautiful. And hey, the best way for you guys to not miss out on any one of these super exciting projects is to hit that subscribe tab. Yes, sir. And follow us. You don't want to miss these. And we would really appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up. It definitely helps out the channel. We have a lot more than just cooking coming up, too. Uh, then again, you know, anytime you're um, camping or hiking or I don't care what, what it is you're doing in the woods, unless you're just out for a couple hours. But if you're actually staying in the woods, you're going to have to eat. So we have a bunch of different ways to address eating while you're out in the woods. And I really can't wait to show you that Camp Chef stove. It's amazing. It's heavy. Now, I'm not going to lie. It's 75 pounds, so you're not going to want to take it on a backpack. <laughs> no, <or anything. laughs> no, not at all. At least, no, I know a couple of people that probably could do it. But <laughs> but, but we did cook some amazing dishes on yes. it last year. We're gonna... The top is flat. Skillet sets right on it. Pan, whatever. Awesome. Yep, and we're going to, we're going we're gonna, to, most likely, one of the things we're going to do on it, mosquitoes will get me. One of the things we're going to do on it is we're going to make potato soup, but I don't know who likes oh, potato soup, yeah. but I'll tell you what. 
potato soup with some bacon and some homemade croutons, mm -hmm. a little cheddar cheese. Oh, full of full of goodness. <laughs> oh my God, it is unbelievable the, when 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 it's cold outside. It is. Oh, and it's not just food for your stomach; it's food for the soul. Yeah, it's it nice. Warms so, all the way down. By the way, thanks, Dad. Your homemade V8? V8 is amazing, especially as warm as it is down here tonight. Definitely, definitely. It's really good. He makes V8 pretty well every year, and he sent us a jar just so we would have it here to share with you guys. Too bad you can't taste it because it's excellent. This year he put a couple of hot Hungarian wax, banana, Hungarian wax peppers. We always call them banana peppers, but if, if you grow a garden, you probably know what I'm talking about. But it made it a little spicy, and it's good. Very good. It really is. What else do we have in store, Gino? Oh, uh, another request about coffee, and we will cover That's right. different ways to make coffee when you're camping, but not as its own episode. We're just going to kind of incorporate it in. You know, three methods that, that we use, perk, pour over, and a press. But we'll cover all those separately, but we will cover them, so stay Oh, we tuned. certainly will, and we've got... We've got a lot of other things that we've talked about doing, but you guys need to let us know what you want to see. You know, some people have let us know what they want to see, but we're, we're, there's a whole lot of things that we can do. Well, I know that we do want to do an episode on fire start. I've been starting fire with flint and steel for yeah. 30, almost 30 years now. So I'd love to show you how to start fire with flint and steel. I'd like to incorporate into, we're not going to do one episode on just one thing because not everybody wants to see that, but we'll show you flint and steel. And in that same episode, we'll probably show you how to make your own char cloth. Because if you ever start a fire with flint and steel, you'll know that you either got to have like punk wood or, or char cloth is, is, right. is an unbelievable thing. It's, it, it's a great thing to know how to make. And that brings me to another point. One of our viewers requested that we do more of the open fire cooking and, and preparedness type things. You know, what what if you, SHPF, you don't you don't you have know? a propane you don't have a propane tank with your propane stove exactly. or your canister stove. So so we're gonna be starting to do a lot more things over a wood fire, a wood stove. Uh, flint and steel is awesome. We'll probably also touch on ferro rod. rod. Uh, you know, some other things. Some magnesium, show you how to use magnesium, yeah. you know, yeah. the ins and outs and do's and definitely don'ts. There oh, are good, a lot of don'ts with that. Good things to have so. when you go and spend time in the woods. Oh, definitely. Just in case something happens and you do need to start in a fire for emergency purposes. Certainly. And there's a lot that a lot of things that we do. We're going to take you on a couple of, well, I know at least one anyway. Um, this fall, we're going to take you on a trip with us. We actually do reenactment. 1750s, if you're from around here, you know where Fort Deschart is. Um, and we go down there for the fall rendezvous, which I'm really looking forward to. We got a canvas wall tent, and I think that 75 pound stove is probably going with this, <laughs> which is a little heavier than what we thought it was going to be. Um, but it, down there, sometimes you have to carry everything in and carry everything out because it's in low ground. So we might get something different, but if we take it along, yeah. we'll be cooking you up some food on top yeah. of the and if not, door. If not, you'll, you can look forward to some more cast iron cooking over to open fire I mean. oh definitely oh yeah I've, 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 I've gotten the works I don't know we always call them pan fried pork chops but we take pork chops and cut them about inch and a quarter inch and a half thick because in my number 10 skillet I can only fit four of them without them being overcrowded and we always call them pan fried but really you're braising them and you cook all that liquid off and you brown them and then you make some milk gravy out of it and you put it on mashed potatoes and Oh my. Yeah, little, my mom showed me how to make that. It's unreal. Another little thing that we call coal cannon. You can look yeah. forward to seeing that. That's really, really good. We might do those pork chops. Actually, we might do those pork chops at, at the reenactment. They call it rendezvous. Um, so we might we, we might do that there. I've, that's usually one of my dishes that I make down there. But we might actually make those pork chops with some coal cannon. Yeah. I can't imagine that coal cannon would be bad with that milk oh, gravy. Oh, that'd be over. awesome. Oh, the other thing you had planned over uh, the Christmas holiday is some uh, Victorian era, 18th century oh, Christmas cooking. Definitely. We are going to, um, and we probably will actually keep it in the same, try to keep it as close to the same time period as we can, but uh, we will be in our period, in our period dress, our, our reenactment outfits, if you want to call them that, um, and we will try to make a period correct Christmas pudding. 
and one of our viewers requested that is a Christmas pudding, but she's from England. So a uh, shout out to you, um, Angie and Leslie. So that, yes. that will be coming for you guys. Yes, a Christmas pudding. And, and requests for uh, bread pudding, soups and bread pudding as well. Soups and bread we will puddings. accommodate those as well. And we still have a cobbler in the works. I had some late season peaches that I was I was hoping were going to come in by this weekend, but they didn't come in. And now I'm kind of wondering if I'm gonna if I'm gonna get to them at all. But if we can't do a peach cobbler, we'll do blackberry. And quite honestly, there ain't nothing like blackberry. Yeah, cobbler. blackberry, blueberry, apple. We'll figure something oh. out. We haven't forgot about your cobbler around. No, it's coming. No, that's right. That's right. So I think we addressed most of the comments that we got. I think anyway. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if um, you guys think of something else, you know. Leave us a fa instant message on our Facebook page, comment on a post, comment on the video. Uh, we'd love to hear what you guys want to see. Yeah, I mean, if you want to see some self-reliant type things, we're all about that and we practice it. We'd be glad to show it to you. Definitely. So just leave us some feedback and let us know. But we appreciate we appreciate you watching us every week. And I don't know if anybody tried that apple pecan uh, cobblestone coffee oh. cake, but I hope you did. But because it, it's and, and, and if and if you're watching this and you watch that one and you're going to try to make it, make sure you watch the whole video because or at least until after it goes in the oven, because there is a step that isn't listed in the in the directions for the ingredients. There is a half a cup of butter and a one cup of packed brown sugar that you have to dump over the top of it. And then I threw a little extra pecans on top, but I didn't tell anybody that. But I had chopped up too many and, you know, I can't waste food. It's a mm. sin to waste pecans. I sure am glad you chopped those extra <laughs> ones up, too. Let it me made it you. really good. So if you didn't watch the whole thing and you actually are interested in making it, don't don't miss the part of the half a cup of butter and the cup of packed brown sugar because that is where the goodness comes from. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So it's been nice talking to y'all, and uh, thanks again for being there. And we're just, like I said, we're just having a good time. And we'll see you next time at the campsite. Yes, we will. Y'all take care. Look at that. Mm-hmm.